Uh, Chairman Dorgan, Ranking Member Domenici, and other distinguished members of the subcommittee, uh, thank you for the opportunity to testify about the Stockpile Stewardship Program. I, I am Michael Anastasio, the Director of the Los Alamos National Laboratory, and I'd like to personally thank the subcommittee uh, for its strong support over very many years uh, for this program that's important, so important to the country. Uh, as I look to the future, uh, until there's a policy change, I must assume that the nation will continue to have a nuclear deterrent. And consequently, our role is to do everything we can to ensure that we remain confident uh, in that deterrent for our national security. The stockpile stewardship program that the country has been following has been the right approach to remain confident while minimizing the need to ever do nuclear testing again. We knew this would be a hard because the science needed requires advances that are well beyond anything we'd ever done before. And that meant new tools, experiment and computational, and the people who can use them. We've been making excellent overall progress the last 12 years with many examples of remarkable accomplishments, even though not all these new tools are yet in place. And to try to illustrate this, I thought I would just tell a, a one little story as an example to illustrate. And, and imagine you're trying to understand what's going on inside a nuclear or a mock nuclear weapon. And you need to take a three-dimensional movie picture using x-rays. But unlike a medical x-ray, the object you're exploring is exploding in front of your eyes. And the length of the movie you're trying to take is only a millionth of a second long. And to make sure you can stop the action that you're watching, the, the uh, the exposure time of this image can only last for a few ten billionths of a second. Um, that's DART, the new facility we're bringing online at Los Alamos, where we have just recently demonstrated that we can meet all, in fact, exceed the technical requirements to accomplish the job I just described. But that's not all, that once you have this image or this movie, now you have to say, well, what, would, what, will, what implications does that have for the overall nuclear performance of this device? And for that, we, meet, we need to be able to use computer simulations to predict the nuclear performance instead of doing a test. In the summer, the Roadrunner computer that we've been developing with IBM, uh, we, we anticipate will be the first computer in the world to ever achieve sustained performance of a petaflop. That's a quadrillion calculations per second. I, you know, quadri I, I like a million billion better than quadrillion. Maybe that speaks better. Uh, but we need a, a computer of that kind of horsepower. Doctor, is that the same as a thousand trillion? That is a thousand trillion, yes, sir. Good for you. That's much simpler. Okay, thank you. <laughs> uh, but, but whatever it is, it's that level of competitional power that we need to try to, uh, to, try to answer that predictive question what nuclear performance will we get. Uh, so that gives a little, I think, example of what we're trying to do. And there are many other accomplishments uh, of outstanding science that I describe at Los Alamos or the other three labs, or the other two labs. I think just as a momentary sidelight, I think it's also important to understand that it's this very same science, the tools and the people, uh, that's being used to meet other national challenges, from countering proliferation and terrorism to global climate modeling and alternate energy sources. The Stockpile Stewardship Program is the program that's putting that science in place. And, and, and if I think about the progress we've made, I think the most important thing uh, of progress in Stockpile Stewardship is that we now understand the status of the current stockpile uh, and the technical issues that control performance better than we ever have. And that's reflected in the annual assessment letters that each of the three laboratory directors uh, and our predecessors have uh, sent in uh, over the last 12 years. So with all of this, I have confidence in the stockpile today. But I am concerned about the risks to success for the future. And let me describe two concerns, two areas of risk. First, the risk to the long-term vitality of science at Los Alamos to support our broad national security missions. The confluence of an aging infrastructure, demanding increasing standards for safety, security, and in the environment, a recent focus on near-term deliverables, and declining operation budget, operating budgets 
are squeezing out science at the laboratory. My second long-term concern, these changes will increase performance uncertainties and pose increasing risk in a low-margin, legacy Cold War uh, weapon stockpile. And by following a remanufacturing approach in a life extension program, we require a Cold War production complex using the technologies and processes which are increasingly expensive, not fully functional, and do not provide an agile uh, response. To manage, to manage these growing stockpile risks, we should be doing more science by increasing the use of our advanced tools and further developing them. With the constrained NNSA budget and the growing infrastructure costs, we are actually doing less science. The basic tenets of the stockpile stewardship program are at risk. The good news is that the progress we've made in understanding opens up alternative paths uh, that we could go forward with uh, uh, rather than the life extension program. Such a path could include a transformed stockpile with increased performance mar margins, hence reducing risks. By also eliminating difficult materials, it could permit a transformed complex further transformed than the NNSA plan uh, is already outlining and uh, further reducing infrastructure costs. So in conclusion, uh, it's my view that it's time for the nation to set a path for the future and provide a commensurate budget that will reduce and take on uh, addressing these risks that I've outlined. Los Alamos remains committed to do all we can uh, in our role as a national security science laboratory. And so with that, I thank you for the opportunity to testify today and I'd be happy to answer any questions.